Good evening, everybody. It's uh, good to be with you this week. I'm excited about tonight. I've been excited all day. Uh, fixing myself up a little bit, <laughs> okay. Uh, excited about um, the encouragement that will come forth tonight. Um, I want to. I pray that everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I pray that everybody will have a great New Year. As you can see, we have our Christmas tree up. So we're excited about that. And there are many presents under the tree because we have grandchildren. And anybody who has grandchildren, you know how that goes. Okay, so tonight is encouragement night and we are going to encourage you in the Lord tonight. I have an amazing testimony to share with you. I asked this particular young woman if I could share this testimony. And she said, by all means, you can say my name. Um, good evening to all those who have tuned in. Betty Harris, uh, Daisy Mode. I missed some people already. Mary Julia, good evening. Linda Jackson, Angela, New Beginnings, yes. And that's who I'm talking about. Okay, I will be talking about Angela. Um, and then uh, Agnes, yes. Barbara, Barbara. Uh, Bertha, hi. Alfreda, hi. It's so good to see all of you tonight. It's a blessing to have you with me. I trust that you will be blessed by tonight's testimony. It is amazing, okay? Good evening, National Church family. Good evening, my cousins, my relatives. Good evening to my friends. Good evening to my, my, um, my music people that are uh, in the field with me of music, all of my colleagues. Good evening to all of y'all. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you. Okay, um, before I give this testimony, I want you to get Proverbs 4.20, Proverbs the fourth chapter and the 20th verse and just have that on standby, okay? Proverbs the fourth chapter and the 20th verse. I do recognize that uh, this is a time that we need encouragement. I mean, we just can't get enough. There's so much anxiety. There's so much stuff going on in the news. Uh, we still have the politics and the presidential transition um, that's trying to take place and all that's going on with that. Uh, we still have Black Lives Matter. We still have, you know, tension in America. Uh, we still have COVID-19 and the damage that that is doing to people. As, as a matter of fact, this testimony that I'm going to share in a few minutes is about someone who is currently experiencing COVID-19. And I'm sharing this, per, this testimony so that you will understand that God is on your side no matter what happens. God is on your side no matter what happens, okay? God is with you no matter what the enemy tries to do to you. So that's why I'm going to share this testimony. God is also with you even if you haven't crossed every T and dotted every I. God is still with you. So I'm going to encourage you tonight uh, because so many of us feel like we have to be perfect. So many of us feel like we have to have gotten it just right in order for God to do the things that we read about in the Bible. So many of us feel like uh, we have to be up here in the heavenlies for God to carry out his word in our lives. But I want you to know there is reality to grace and mercy. There is reality to grace and mercy. Do you understand what I'm saying? God has mercy on us. God already knew what we were going to be like before we were born. He knew the mistakes that we would make. He knew the paths that we would choose. He knew how many times he had to come after us. God always knows. He, know, he knows before you know. Okay? But guess what? He has a remedy for you. He has a solution for you. He has an answer for you. And that is in his son, Jesus Christ. And his son, Jesus Christ, is available to you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what your issues are. So let me just go ahead and get into my testimony. This young woman, Angela, Angela New Beginnings is her name, okay? Um, I've known her since she was about maybe 11 years old. And uh, of course, now she's, she's grown and she has children who are practically almost grown themselves. And um, 
you know, this young lady came down with COVID. Now, she did tell me that I could give her testimony and give her name. She said, please do. I am not ashamed of what God has done for me. Okay, so Angela came down with COVID uh, about a week ago. She called my daughter, Dr. Angelique, and uh, let her know, okay, so that we could all be praying for her. And we did start praying for her, okay? And then the next thing today, she called me and she was just depressed. She was crying. She was saying like she felt like the walls were coming in on her. Um, she just felt like she was going down with this COVID-19. She felt like God wasn't going to deliver her because she hadn't walked the perfect path because she had strayed from God because she had done things that she knew she shouldn't do. Okay. And so therefore she did not believe, she was not able to believe that God was going to really deliver her from this. She felt like God was punishing her. Okay. Like God was, 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 um, not going to reward her with health because she had disobeyed him. Now, how many of you have ever felt that way? Oh, I know you're out there. Okay. I know you're out there. Okay. Uh, we, we, as human beings, we will feel that way when we haven't done crossed every T and dotted every I and done everything that, that the Bible is telling us to do. Okay. When we have fallen short, as the Bible says, of the glory of God, then we begin to feel like God is not going to rescue us because we haven't done it right. We haven't obeyed him all the time. Oh, but mercy steps in. See, God knows your heart, okay? God knows the intent of your heart, okay? And he allows mercy to step in for us. So this young lady was really, really depressed. She was just in tears, almost hysterical, and about to lose it. And I began to minister to her. And I'm not going to go into everything that I said to her. You can probably imagine uh, one of the things that I said to her is you got to understand that God does not uh, 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 God does not hurt you because you haven't done right. We don't serve a God like that, okay? That's why we have mercy. That's what I told her. That's why there is mercy at the throne of grace. There is mercy at the throne of God. There is something called the mercy seat in heaven, amen? Okay, so we come under that mercy. So therefore, uh, and I told her a number of other things, and I, I began to, to, to pray with her and rebuke that spirit of condemnation and rebuke that spirit of up and down and serving God today, not serving God tomorrow, um, detaching her from the enemy's grip, detaching her from uh, this thing that says, you know, God is not going to help me, detaching her from all of these negative spirits, plus having her repeat the sinner's prayer, amen, so she could get herself together, amen, and so, um, you know, we have to get right with God first, amen, we have to ask for forgiveness first, amen, and so she did that with her whole heart, I mean, I could, you know when someone is sincere, you can feel it, okay, and she was just really crying out to God, well, you know, we got off the phone, and, and um, you know, about, maybe about an hour later, it wasn't much longer, about an hour later, um, I got a call from her and I call her back and, um, and she tells me because when I t pray with her the first time, this young lady could not taste. Okay. She had COVID. She could not taste. She could not smell. And she had a severe headache. She said, after I prayed with her, the headache was gone. She said she felt like she needed to blow her nose. She blew her nose. All of a sudden, she could smell, she could taste, and the headache that she had been experiencing was completely gone. And she called me so excited, she couldn't believe that God had, she sounded like a whole different person. I mean, I mean, that, that, that spirit of depression that I heard in her voice at the first time we talked, all of that was gone. She sounded like the old Angela that I knew. I mean, and, and she couldn't believe that God had done this for her, okay? And it just backed up the, the, what I was telling her, that God does not that fault you. He doesn't. He's not like human beings. He doesn't do tit for tat. 
Come on, somebody. God does not fault you because you didn't walk a straight line. God already knows we're going to falter. God already knows that, that we are going to do things that are not right. God already knows that. That's why he said, I have come into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. God already knew what our faults were. He already knew how we could. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to get this testimony out because I was so rejoicing with her. I mean, God is just amazing. Not only did he prove to her that he was not holding her faults against her, but that he can love her more than the world can love her, okay? And he is loving her more than the world can love her and does love her. He, God convinced her that he loves her no matter what, and he is there for her no matter what. He is there for you no matter what. God loves you no matter what. I'm going to encourage you tonight because the enemy uses our failures against us. He uses our faults against us. He makes us believe, you know, he tells us, well, you did this and you did that, okay? So God is not going to do this and is not going to do that for you. But the devil is a liar, okay? Because all we have to do is come to God with an open heart, okay? He already knows what you did, so you might as well confess it, okay? And say, Father, forgive me and help me. Help me to obey you. Help me to do what you want me to do. Help me to be like you want me to be. That's all you got to say to God. And God is standing there with his arms wide open, ready to receive you. And he's saying, come to me. I can fix it for you, okay? That's what Angela did. She went to God. And guess what God did? He fixed it for her. Okay, and he not only fixing it for her, not only fixed it for her, but he proved to her that whatever, whatever situation she finds herself in, he is ready to receive her back. Come on, somebody. He is, he's waiting for her to just say, Father, help me. And I told her that's all she has to say is, Father, help me, help me. Help me to do this thing right. Help me to obey you. Help me to do it the way you want me to do it. Give me the strength to stand for right. The strength to stand no matter what's coming against me. She began to share with me some things that happened to her while she was a child and what caused her to, to function the way she does today as an adult. Okay? And, 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 and you know what? And she shared that with me. After the Lord say, had me say to her, and I didn't know why I was saying this, but I said to her, God just proved to you that he can love you more than the world could ever love you. He loves you more than the world can love you. Okay? That's what it proved to her. And it caused her to understand that it didn't matter what has happened in her lifetime or in her past. God loves her and loves her more than anything or anybody else in this world could ever love her. I'm encouraging you tonight so that if the enemy has been beating you up, if the enemy has been tormenting you and make you feel like God isn't going to hear your prayer, he hear somebody else's prayer, but he's not going to hear yours because you know what you've done. The devil is a liar. Repent to God. Open up your heart and confess to him and let him know you're sorry and ask him to help you. And I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord will sweep over your soul. God comes after the, the, the weak. He comes after the fallen. Okay, the Bible says he'll leave the 99 and go get that one sheep who has gone astray. Okay, so that's, that's what God did for Angela today. That's what God will do for you if you need that. If you're in that situation tonight, God will leave the 99 and he will come after you because he loves you just that much. All right, I had to share that. I had to encourage you. Somebody could be going through the exact same. This is why testimonies are important. Because you never know who's going through the exact same thing that you are experiencing. So when somebody hears that God did it for you, and when they can identify with where you were at, then it gives them faith and hope for where they are currently. And they'll say, if God did it for them, God will do it for me. Oh, yes, we praise God tonight. We give him the glory tonight. I'm encouraging you tonight. I don't care what has gone on in your life. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care what you've done. God is a forgiving, loving God. And he's just waiting for you to say, Father, forgive me. Father, 
help me. That's all he wants from you. And guess what? He'll do the rest. My God, my God. Okay, let's go on now. I'm going to go to Proverbs 4, chapter tra chapter 4, verse 20. Okay, and I'm going to uh, do verses 20, 21, and 22. And I'm doing the NLT, the New Living Translation. I love different translations depending on what it's saying. As long as it's what the Bible is saying, okay? It's sometimes it says it in a way that's a little more understanding, okay? So, um, Proverbs, the fourth chapter, 20th verse I'm starting. My child, listen to this. Pay attention to what I say. This is God speaking to us. My child, pay attention to what I say. Now, you know when you're raising a child and that child seems to, well, kind of not hearing you, hearing you, distracted, and you'll turn their face and you'll say, pay attention, okay? Or if you're in school and a teacher looks at you and you're doing something else, the teacher will say, pay attention. Well, God is telling us tonight, pay attention. Take heed to what I'm saying, okay? Listen carefully to my words. Don't just listen but listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. Verse 21, don't lose sight of my words. What I'm getting ready to tell you, don't lose sight. What I have taught you, what I have told you, what you have learned, like in all of these Bible studies that y'all are listening to nowadays during COVID, in the Bible studies that you attended before COVID, to the sermons that you have heard on Sunday mornings, God is saying, listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight. Don't take your eyes off of what I'm saying to you. Do not forget what I'm saying. Keep it in your mind, okay? It goes on to say, let them penetrate deep into your heart. Why does he use the heart? And not the mind. Because the Bible says out of the heart are the issues of man. It's When it's something gets in your heart, that's what you're going to do. Okay? When it gets down in your heart, that's what you're going to believe. And that's what you're going to pay attention. That's what you're going to do. That's why people will say, I love you with my whole heart. They don't say I love you with my whole mind. They say I love you with my whole heart. When the heart is involved, that's the essence of that person. Okay? God wants the essence of you to concentrate and listen to what he is saying. Verse 22, for they will bring life to those who find them. God's words bring life. If you don't ever remember anything else, you need to remember that whatever the Lord has said will bring life to you. This was a scripture that God gave me when I had my cancer battle. And when I saw this, it was like, bing, the light bulb went off in my head. You know, it, it said, the, the bring, the, the, uh, God's words bring life. That's why I stayed in his word. I stayed in the healing scriptures because I felt like the enemy was trying to assign death to me. Okay. But as long as I stayed in the word of God, there was my life. That's where I would live. And y'all heard me say, uh, you know, I didn't talk on the phone. I didn't chit chat with friends. I didn't watch TV. I just stayed with God. I stayed in those scriptures because I knew that if I stayed in those scriptures, if I stayed where my life was, you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You have to stay where your life is. You can't go off with dead things. You can't go off with dead people. Oh my God. You can't go off with dead friends. Jesus, have mercy. You can't go off with people who are not pouring life into your soul and into your spirit. Are you getting me? Okay. God says that my words, his words, what he says in the Bible, it brings life to you. It brings, you will find, if you find them, it says, for they bring life to those who find them. What does that mean? Everybody's not going to get into it like that. You've got to go after God. You've got to go after God and after what he has said. And if you go after what he has said, his words will bring life to you. I don't care what situation you're in. I, unless it is your time to leave here, 
And even after, after the natural death, you still won't die, the Bible says. You will have a spiritual life. You will live. You will live. You hear me? You can live here on earth and you will live here after earth. Come on, somebody. But you've got to find God's words. Where did he say it? What did he say? What did he mean? You've got to find his words if you want life, if you want deliverance from depression, deliverance from anxiety, deliverance from fear, deliverance from, from headaches, uh, migraines, deliverance from whatever's going on with you, deliverance from heart palpitations. Come on, I know I'm hitting somebody because people are experiencing all of these things right now because of this season that we're in on earth. But you don't have to live in that space. You can live in the space of Jesus Christ who brings life. His words bring life into our very being. Let's finish that scripture, verse 22. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Healing is not just physical healing, but it is mental healing, emotional healing. That's why the scripture says healing to their whole body. Sometimes every part of us needs to be healed. We need mental healing. Come on, somebody. Somebody's mind is just racing, just racing out of control, okay? And you don't have to live in that place. Just find what God has said. One of the things he said about your mind, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Oh, my God. What do you mean stayed on me, Lord? I can't keep my mind stayed on you 24. Yes, you can. You've got to think and meditate on what God has said. What are the, the scriptures that deal with depression? What are the scriptures that deal with fear? You look those scriptures up and you write them down. And that's what you say all day long. That's what I did when I was trying to get my healing. I got all the healing scriptures and that's what I said all day long. I went to sleep with it on my ears so I had sweet sleep. I didn't go to sleep worrying about tomorrow. I went to sleep resting in the arms of Jesus, resting in the life that he was pouring into my body through his words. You understand what I'm saying? You don't have to live frustrated. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. If we could just get this, let God's words seep into your thoughts. That's why he said, don't forget. Don't forget, listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. What? Don't lose sight of them? What does that mean? Okay? What that means is don't fill your ears with everything else but what God has said. You're listening to CNN. You're listening to ABC News. You're listening to NBC. You're listening to CBS. You're reading the papers. You're doing whatever. You're, you're listening to everything but what God has said. Come on. Come on. We need to ask God to give us a desire to hear him and only him. But the flesh fights against being in the presence of God. The flesh fights against wanting to stay in that realm. The flesh wants to sit back and enjoy life. The flesh wants to sit back and do what the flesh wants to do. And everything that the flesh wants to do is contrary to to the will of God and contrary to our peace. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, under the secret place. Where is that secret place? In God. It's in his presence. Well, how do I get in his presence? By listening to his word all the time. Okay, there are, there are, listen, you can get your phone, listen to it on your iPad. You can listen to it on, on, your, on your phone, on podcasts. You want to hear the word of God, you can find it anywhere you want to find it. But you got to want to find it. So we're going to pray that God help us to want to be in his presence. You think I don't know that people 
but just the, the, the nature of man, just, that's just too much for me. I, I, ju I just can't, I just can't live there. I just need to enjoy myself sometime. Whoever said being in the presence of God wouldn't be enjoyable? Whoever said that? Who told you that? The devil did. The devil is a liar. And he is the father of lies, the Bible says. Okay? He, the devil told you that. Whoever said it's not enjoyable to be in the presence? Let me tell you something. When you get a good dip in the presence of God, it's like you don't want to come out. You don't want to come out. You don't want to come out of that aura. Because that aura is so overwhelmingly soothing. Are you following me? We have got to get in God and stay. That is the answer. Now, we hear this all the time. Jesus is the answer, okay? But we don't do it. We don't apply it, okay? But God is warning us tonight. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Don't get carried away by everything else. Don't focus on everything else that's going on. Focus on what God is saying. Focus on it. Let it go into your heart. For those are the words that will bring you life. You, you haven't lived life until you get into God. <laughs> you haven't lived life, okay? Because in God, there is peace. In God, there is joy. In God, you just feel like singing all the time. In God, there's laughter. <laughs> the Bible says laughter is as good as medicine. God created laughter. So what makes you think that you can't laugh and enjoy yourself in the presence of God? You see how the devil... The devil just tricks us up in so many ways, okay? So so there you'll be laughing. You know, you, you'll find yourself in a happy place, okay? In a place of joy. Come on, somebody. And, and when things aren't going right, guess what you do? Turn right back to the Word. You, you just stay in the Word. Okay, but well, what did God say about this situation? Okay, well, God, I know you're going to bring me out. God will remind you in His Word that He's going to bring you out, Okay? Many are the, the, the trials of the righteous. Many. But God promised to deliver us out of them all. All. Everything we go through, God has said he'll deliver us. He will bring us out. My God. So why are you going to go in and out get, your, get yourself all messed up with depression and everything else that the devil wants you to feel? Okay? God said, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to, God is going to deliver us from COVID-19. It's just a matter of time. Just sit back and enjoy God while you're waiting. Okay? Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. He's strengthening your heart tonight. That's what God is doing. He's reminding you. He's reminding us that I am God. And I know how to bring you out. When you can't figure it out, I already have it worked out, okay? Yes, sir. God has it worked out. So you just sit back and rock yourself and sing yourself self-happy. Amen? Sing yourself happy. Sing yourself into a, a complete shout. Come on. Sometimes we get our grandbabies and we say, come on, babies. Come on. One of my grandbabies, he prays for himself. He put his hand on his forehead and he goes all the way back like this. Then he runs over into a corner and starts bucking. You know, you're not, I'm not kidding. He runs into a corner and just starts dancing. My God, the other grandbaby, he just jumps up and down. Just jumps up and down. Just jumps up and down. And we say, praise him, babies. Praise him. And they just praise him. You know what? God wants us just like innocent children. Okay? Those children aren't worried about anything. Nothing. And that's the way God wants us. He don't want us to worry about anything. He's got it all in his hands. And we got to just sit back and trust him and watch him do it. That's it. He's got your back. It's like I told Angela. God got you, baby. He's got your back. He's in front of you. He's behind you. He's on all around you. What else do you need? You don't need anything else, okay? You need God's presence. You need his word to, to burst forth in your heart. And I promise you that your life will never be the same. It will never be the same. It is not to say that you won't have a day, that you won't feel a little bad, feel a little depressed. But, oh, it's temporary because you're going to spring right back up. Trust me, you're going to spring right back up. Yes, you will. Because when you remember what the Lord has said, when you remember his word, and you remember who it is that, that got you under control, there's no reason for you to stay down. None whatsoever. 
Because our God is all powerful. He's all powerful. And he got us. He has us, y'all. He has us. Don't get carried away with the news. Don't get carried away with what you're hearing. Don't get carried away with the phone conversations. I was talking to somebody the other day on the phone. I said, baby, don't, 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 don't get down. Don't get down. Keep looking up. Keep, if you don't want to go down, there's only one way not to go down, and that's to look up. <laughs> to God be the glory. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you tonight. Thank you for your word of encouragement. We thank you, oh God, for reminding us that you are on our side. We come to you in Jesus' mighty name because it's through Jesus that we have access to your throne. And we thank you tonight, oh God, that we can talk to you about anything. And we thank you that you have reminded us, Lord, that your mercy is there for us and that all we have to do is concentrate on you. And that will get us through. You are more than enough for what we human beings need. Help us, oh God, help us to desire to dwell in your presence. Help us to desire to let go of the world and the ways of the flesh. Help us to desire to seek after those things that you have ordained, those things that you have stated. Help us, oh God, to enjoy the presence of God. Help us, Lord, to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. Help us to delight ourselves in the Lord. Let that be our source of joy. Let you and your word be our source of joy. Because if it's our source of joy, it will be our source of strength. Father God, help us to stay focused on what you are saying. Yes, we hear this over here in the world, but the Lord has said. And that's where we have to be. Yeah, this said this, but God said this. And God, we've got to be that way in this day and time, especially. We pray, oh God, that you give us a hunger for you as never before. God, put your fire inside of us. Put up thirst. You said those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I pray, oh God, that you give each and every last one of us a hunger and a thirst like we have never known, like we have never experienced. For these are more serious times and we need a greater thirst for the things of God. Father, we don't desire to go the way of the world. We don't desire to get caught up in the world. We don't desire to have our flesh dominate us. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the spiritual come forth. Let the supernatural reign over us. God, we need your help. We cannot do this of our own. Pull us closer to you. Pull us into your presence. Pull us into your word. Pull us into a daily lifestyle of communing with you. Pull us into prayer. Pull us into meditation on you. Pull us into psalms and hymns. Pull us into praises unto the Most High God. Oh, Father, we pray that your spirit draw us. Draw us closer, oh God. Draw us into you, oh God. Let us become more separated from the world and the way the world does things. Lord Jesus, sometimes we find ourselves doing things the way the world does it, thinking like the world, talking like the world, acting like the world. We pray, God, that you put a transformation, bring about a transformation over our minds, over our hearts. Yes, our hearts need to be transformed. For where our heart is, there will our treasure be also. Help us, oh God. Let our hearts burn for you like we've never known it to burn. Oh, Father, we're praying that you increase our hunger, increase our desire for the things of God and not for the things of the world. Don't let us be content. Don't let us be passive. Don't let us go along to get along. But, oh, God, let us earnestly seek after you, earnestly run after you, earnestly search for you. You said those that seek me shall find me. Father, we pray that you put a press in our spirits, put a press in our souls to seek you, 
to run after you as never before. We pray, oh God, that you rejuvenate your church, the church of the living God. Rejuvenate your people. Help us, your people, to really go forth in you in power and in might. In the name of Jesus, help us to remember, oh God, that you are moving by your spirit. And we want to move with you, Lord. Just like that cloud that rested over the Israelites in the wilderness. Father, when that cloud moved, they moved. When that cloud stood still, they stood still. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, hover over us, Father God. Hover over us in a mighty way. Help us to avail ourselves to you that your presence and your glory may fill our temples in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we need you. We are earnestly crying out to you. Lord, we won't make it unless you help us. We won't make it unless we cry out to you. We won't make it unless our hearts are fixed and our minds are made up. Help us, oh God to make up our mind, to run after the living God, to bury ourselves in your word. For you said in you there is life. If we find your words, we will find life. Not just life, but health to our whole body. Mental health, physical health, spiritual health, emotional health, any kind of health that we need. Father, it is in you. Life is in you. Help us to remember, life is in you. And outside of you, there is death. Outside of you, we will drown. Outside of you, we won't make it. Outside of you, we're going down. But in you, oh God, we will stand. We will stand firm on Christ, the solid rock. I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Help us to stand on you and on your word. Your word is you and you are your word. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Help us, oh God, to understand that if we get into your word, that's the same as getting into you. Father, I pray tonight in Jesus' name, that you receive this prayer. Father, I pray for everybody that is listening to this prayer. Keep us covered. Keep them covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Protect them from the evil one. Protect their families from the evil one. Protect them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you promised to supply the need. That's why they've got to get into your word. Because it's in your word that these promises will come to pass. They will happen. But for assurance, a certainty, it will happen. Oh God, we pray that you help us tonight. That's all we're asking, that you help us. We thank you for the miracle, this miracle testimony that you did in this young woman's life today. I seal her in the blood of Jesus Christ. I put the blood of Jesus all around her so that she will not go back but she will continue to move forward and up in you in the name of Jesus. And nobody but you could have done it. And nobody but you gets the glory. Now, God, we submit this prayer to you. We put it under the blood of Jesus. We once again pray for our frontline workers. Lord, we cannot forget them. They're tired. They're weary. They're becoming overwhelmed. Lord, the leadership of this nation... Help the leadership to do something about what is going on in this country. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, put the people on the leadership's heart. In Jesus' name. There's nothing too hard for you, God. You said you could turn around the heart of a king. And we have read about you doing that in your word. So, Father, we pray that you turn the heart of our leader. And let him be concerned about the people in America. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And this virus that is attacking the land. And taking so many people before their time. 
We pray, oh God, that you keep us from this evil spirit, the coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, protect us under the blood of Jesus Christ. You said when I see the blood, I will pass over you. We're asking you in Jesus' name to put the blood of Jesus on our doorposts. Oh, in Jesus' name and over our lives and over our families' lives, over our church members' lives, over our pastors' lives. God, we commit ourselves to you for you are the keeper. You are the keeper. So we put ourselves in the hands of the one who keeps. It is the Lord who keeps. We thank you for keeping us thus far. And we're going to believe that you're going to keep us and we're going to see you move and deliver us from this, this stuff, this mess that's going on in our nation. Now, God, we thank you for who you are. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all of the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless each one of you. I always tell you I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, and that is the truth. I pray that you've been uplifted and encouraged tonight. I know so many of you wonder why I don't go longer. Well, I am aware that people are working from home and they're tired and I don't want them to have to cut me off because now they're tired and they got to get themselves together for bed. So, you know, we have to use wisdom in everything we do. I just need, I just need to be on here long enough to tell you what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And let you go to sleep with that on your mind. God bless each and every last one of you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to your own understanding and he will direct your path. God bless you all. I love you all in Jesus' name.